fun. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Delusions of Grandeur. Uh, uh, we are about to uh, have a uh, discussion about two uh, two different uh, films. The first one is going to be uh, 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 is going to be the pre-show, which uh, which is uh, uh, why, why don't you tell me uh, what this movie, uh, this first film, is all about, Mo? Uh, well, it's a good little Japanese slasher flick here. It's called Evil Dead Trap. It was directed by Toshiharu Akeda. Damn, Brandon should probably be doing this. It was written by Takashi Ishii, and it stars various <laughs> Japanese folks. Um, it was distributed by Japanese Home Video and is released on May 14th of 1988. Uh, basically, Late Night Host receives a snuff tape, so they decide that they're going to fucking go to the place where it was shot not without this any movie, right? assistance. Not, not this movie, right? No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, this is not, you know, this isn't the boomstick one. This is this is the Japanese <laughs> absorbing <laughs> twins movie. <laughs> That's pretty much the gist of it. Um, okay. So, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and assume this was both of your guys' first time through this one, yeah? Yeah, um, I, I would have to say so. I collected it myself, and uh, I ended up... Uh, Get, uh, getting both copies, I think. I think one was on Unearthed Films, and then the other one was on Snaps, uh, I, I believe. And uh, it, it's kind of weird. Uh, both are like in two different like areas, you know, uh, of distribution. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, but um, seeing them for the first time, I can definitely see the. Um, I love the soundtrack for uh, for the first film. Oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think we're losing him for a moment. Oh, you're kind of black right now, uh, now Mo. So come back to us. Hey, it's not a pre-show until I randomly disconnect. So I'm back. Hey, I'm gonna hey, you got uh, two two of you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> out of there, doppelganger. Um, <laughs> so, so what? 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 You, you, uh, after seeing them both, you can what? Sorry, I missed that. Well, uh, uh, before you were trapped by the Evil Dead for the, uh, there for a moment. <laughs> uh, uh, well, um, I, I definitely love the soundtrack for the uh, for this the first film. Oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I, I was I was getting kind of a Suspiria vibe, actually, uh, somewhat to the. Oh, yeah. Uh, to the music uh, involved behind behind it, because you could uh, definitely hear some '80s synth. Uh, uh, oh yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of got a bit of a video game quality to it too, which you know kind of oh, yeah. really makes me wish that they could have done like a Famicom game for this. It could have been like a hybrid of like Clock Tower and Sweet Home or something. That'd have been cool. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was thinking about Sweet Home when I uh, was watching this as well, and. Actually, well, might as well just go into it. This is, in a way, my first time, but it is not my first time. Uh -oh. I watched this because I prepared for this on our original week, which was last week, but we switched with Kotobuki Jake. And I just enjoyed the film. I enjoyed it so much, I actually showed it off to my wife. So that was Back in a. Yeah, you seemed to... You watched it like three or four <laughs> times, didn't you? And then... I said, you know, I like this film enough that I am going to get it. And I bought the Synapse, and I bought the Unearth uh, copy for the second one. And uh, then I watched it for the third time. And I'm <laughs> kind of glad I watched it on the third time because the transfer on that DVD is so much clearer than the other, and the translation oh, is better. I can't wait, man. I got one <laughs> coming myself. So, because uh, there are a couple of things that that were different in the translation that I think improved the quality of the story in the Synapse version. So, I, I actually really, uh, I, I have mixed feelings on this film. But as far as, as a whole, it, it just really, uh, it was the one that just pulled me in and I had to watch it again. Mm -hmm. so it was kind of cool. That's awesome, man. I mean, I'm glad if anything, this has been successful just because you got that level of enjoyment out of it, you know, and we both oh, yeah. realized we needed it in our collection. Uh, for me, it was a bit different. Like, I'm pretty sure I torrented this back in the day when I first like got into collecting 
trying to collect more splatter movies and stuff. And when you realize like, oh shit, Asians do this too. Uh, you start finding movies like these, you know, you hear about them or you hear about like the guinea pig movies or, oh, you know, man. entrails of a virgin, stuff like that. Ball Ichi machine. the killer. <laughs> Meatball machine. Yeah, that's a good one. Tetsuo the Iron Man, I think should be viewed mm -hmm. previous to that. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, so just it's it was on the short list of like Asian splatter <laughs> flicks to get, you know, and I oh, could yeah. never find the first one on DVD back then. I was going to Hastings a bunch. So unless I could find it physically, I was really like adverse to ordering online for some reason it's stupid in hindsight but you know it was fun at the time mm -hmm. uh, but they had the second one yeah. so i bought it and was just immediately underwhelmed with it we'll get there when we when we get to that guy but this one i enjoyed like even the first time i watched it back then i really enjoyed it and that directly sort of assisted in me not liking the second one um but yeah. this is the first time I've really sat down and revisited it, like not drunk, just trying to watch splatter movies. I actually seriously watched <laughs> it. And it's pretty goddamn good, man. Build some good atmosphere. I like the fucking location that they're shooting it in. Um, for being a cast that's oh, yeah. largely built of people, or at least, you know, one of the principal characters is a porn star. Mm -hmm. I think that you would never guess that just fucking looking at it, you know? Um, and the dude that directed it used to just do skin flicks, I guess. They call them pink films in Japan. I was mm. unaware of this until this afternoon. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just, it's 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 good stuff, you know? It's it's hard not to immediately respect it just in, on terms of it being an 80s slasher movie. And then when you take into account that it's Japanese and it kind of has a bit of a sort of Italian Jallo vibe, you know? Like they definitely took influence from other non-Japanese stuff for this, and it shows in, in the best kind of ways. Oh yeah, so. oh yeah. That um, felt like it almost felt like an American splatter film until uh, mm -hmm. until you get to the end. Uh, yeah, but uh, we'll we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 got an ending on there that I don't think anyone will soon forget <laughs> when you <laughs> when you see it. You know. Um, so what were you guys' thoughts just in terms of the initial plot? Like, how stupid is it to get a snuff film and then go to the place where it was shot and immediately <laughs> split up? What do you guys think of that? Well, at first I thought it was uh, just going to be your all-out saw torture porn, you know, kind of thing. You know, the, 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 they... Uh, at first I was kind of getting like a, a Rengu kind of a vibe uh, because of the... Uh, the uh, she's looking at the VHS uh, and she sees herself, you know, and uh, uh, and she sees herself in this place uh, with this uh, with this guy or uh, this unknown, um, evidently a torturer. <laughs> and um, we find out that she's part of this like all women news crew, uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, they they end up going off. And uh, uh, somehow they uh, they end up finding the place that was in the video. So I don't know how they ended up finding that place well, right away. Well, it shows them driving for well, a long time. Well, the video showed them, yeah. Yeah, and so they and just followed they the basic that, directions. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, that was an obvious. Uh, I mean, it was an obvious trap from the get go. The way uh -huh. that the film was sent, the the little message that they had on it, you know, relating to the morning show. And just the way they had it shot, because they shot him driving from around the area where they were at to the kill site. They he it was wanted to, they wanted it to be found, and of course, the first this first like the splatter film, the the, the snuff film is probably the main reason why Jake wouldn't be able to watch this movie. Oh, the uh, <laughs> actual snuff tape itself. Yeah, the other stuff's pretty standard, oh, yeah. like you know, slasher movie fare for the most part. But that's oh yeah, that snuff tape in the finale are like the weird parts, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What were your guys' thoughts about that snuff tape? It's like it's it's a it's a kick to the dick right out of the gate, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God, if it keeps going like this, even I might not be able to watch the rest of it. <laughs> oh man, I loved it in the way that it like with the eye. Mm -hmm. okay. And how they did the where they they like bounce between like color and like that weird sort of I don't know what that's called, man. There's probably a name for yeah. whatever that like sort of filter or whatever is, but it's like black and white, but almost kind of bluish. I like uh, the way uh, the way that uh, that uh, the camera uh, moved and angle uh, angled on on her eye 
uh, a wh while the uh, while the victim's eye was being cu uh, cut, and uh, the fact that uh, that it almost like puts you in the first person, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like the fear uh, that the person was uh, was feeling and seen while that, uh, that person was getting sliced open. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those parts in the movie, you know? that's what really gave it that that giallo feel to me, where it's like, you know, just the black glove killer movies, because they do a lot of that, those sort of shots in those, I feel like, especially the earlier ones where they're not going all Argento with it and flying around with the camera. Fucking... Oh. Yeah, Go ahead. to Cat of Nine Tails. <laughs> right? Um... <laughs> I, th I like how the jelly comes out of that eye. I thought that was a nice touch. <laughs> Usually in those eye scenes in movies like in New York Ripper, or Zombie, or whatever, you know, where there's like an eye gets pierced, there's no fluid. And I always imagine an eye being full of oh, yeah. jelly, you know. So. No, it's it's nothing like uh, it's nothing entirely like the the scene in Naked Blood, though. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm familiar with that one, but I'd like to see it. <laughs> we'll have you guys to... know of any other good eyeball trauma and horror movies let us know uh, i saw a pretty good one in bloody birthday this morning that i enjoyed arrow right through a yeah. peephole fucking it's a good movie um <laughs> so what are you guys thoughts on our cast of characters going into this like they you know obviously they get this tape and she's like wow that's pretty fucked up and then they just take a bunch of people to go and and check this place out and they, they bring a guy with them fucking what's his name condo uh just to have like a dude in case it's dangerous, but I don't know. Call me crazy. Well, you get a murder tape. You should probably also bring the police. We did get yeah. to see a couple. Uh, uh, we did get to see a couple of them topless, so uh, they were pretty underneath all of that. Oh gosh, the the decisions that were made in this movie. It's it's like I say, it's right back to that commercial that they're making fun of, with the, making fun of the horror movies. Like, why don't we just get in the car? They're like. No, we need to hide behind the wall of chainsaws over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Where they're just sitting there, and I mean, the second scene is like, let's go have just... sex in the dirtiest place imaginable. Let let's just do it, you know. <laughs> what is the killer likely about that? Uh, Sinus is Yeah, that's wise. Uh, yeah. Well, and they, I mean, the girl that was targeted in the tape. As soon as they get there, that Nami chick walks off by herself. Right. Um, uh, yeah. she, uh, she obvious. Go ahead. Uh, well, she said uh, it, somewhere throughout the, the the film that she wanted to somewhat meet the guy. Uh, okay. uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, that's that's that's, a, that's that's yeah. I don't. That's kind of sadistic. <laughs> I can't even with that one. I mean, <laughs> most horror movies they're dumb. I mean, we obviously need them to make dumb decisions like so that they can get killed right but this girl practically hops on the platter and puts the apple in her mouth you know it's like yeah, it's, well, it's like putting a, die, putting, a, so, yeah. putting a sign in the middle of her forehead saying kill me yeah and, and because this is you know apparently some type of pseudo pink flick there's got to be at least a couple rapey scenes in there and we get those too unfortunately but <laughs> And that's that's where my I liked Kondo. I thought he was like a fun prankster until he got all rapey on us. But what you know, any standout people on the cast to you guys? Um, I I guess um uh, one of the uh, people that stands out is the uh, the guy who who ended up uh, uh, who showed up just in sunglasses uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 first, and uh, he didn't yeah. say who he was, and then uh, then eventually we found out that he was looking for his brother. Um, and, uh, he ended up being like the, uh, the, uh, the main evil guy, you know, uh, uh, well, part of the main evil guy. Yeah. I don't, I'm not sure where I landed on that one yet. Whoops. Uh, so, you know, just to fill people in, I mean, there's not a ton to the plot. They go to this place looking for the dude that shot the snuff tape and fucking surprise, they find him and he starts killing people. And yeah. we, we got a mystery man looking for his brother, you know, as these people are getting knocked off, slowly whittling it down until it's just this main girl, Nami. And her show's like kind of, you know, designed to lure in creepers, right? It's like a late night fucking yeah. news show. And she pretty much says right out the gate, it's for lonely people that have sleepless nights and shit. And <laughs> some of them are serial killers, you know, that's just the odds aren't always going to be in your favor with that demographic. And you know, 
they start getting bumped off by this dude. Um, basically turns out that the dude who's looking for his brother, well, we'll save that till we go through some of these kills. Uh, yeah. I actually really like the character of that guy myself. He was probably my mm -hmm. favorite. Yep, it's right here in my he notes. He was like top annoying. three for sure. Now, if well, I was to go on the opposite end of most annoying, there was the one girl who just panics and runs off <laughs> and decides to run straight through a room that's collapsing. As it's collapsed, she stops. She goes back and she decides, oh, I'm going to go right into the room that's collapsing yep. instead of where she was going. Balls of steel on her. And then, and then the one who interacts with her is my least favorite because he's all rapey. And yeah, the a little bit better on him, and the uh, because you see him chained up a little earlier in the film, and the translation's a little bit better in the synapse because in the synapse, you get the feeling that he's a little bit the killer, that he's actually in on some of the killing. And uh, whereas in the YouTube one, it did not feel like that. He just felt like he was another yeah. victim that was just. He, he's I, in my I, notes. I, I, this ball gag. I, I didn't even know his name, so I just put him I as ball like, gag in my I notes. Feel, I feel like he he is uh, uh, the the little pet, the, uh, the 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 little pet experiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. And... <laughs> yeah, chained up in the pit there. I liked it. I mean, I, I, even without context, I fucking was like, oh, this guy's savage. He's got a ball gag dude in the pit over here. Uh, it looked like a homemade ball oh, gag, too. Like, he just tied a wiffle ball bat to a dog <laughs> collar, or a wiffle ball to a dog collar, you know? Um, but fun fact, that girl, oh, like, that annoying yeah, yeah. bitch that runs through the collapsing room is yeah. a porn star, and the movie was actually funded by the company, allegedly, you know, according to the internet, mm -hmm. uh, to be a vehicle for that girl to start doing, like, actual acting. But the director, thank <laughs> God, saw that she was like probably not up to the job. So he put her as supporting character and he put that other girl as the main character. That's why there's that sort of out of place scene where they mm -hmm. run into each other and they're just talking about how they're scared and they need to leave. And it's like, OK, that kind of goes without yeah. saying mm -hmm. uh, that was, I think, put there just to give that girl more screen time because she's pretty much the budget was that porn star chick. That's why she also gets the most naked out of everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The, the the other one gets fairly naked herself. She I does, <laughs> but yeah, she doesn't she have does. ball gag groping her in a van and fucking <laughs> switching them all. Now that, that is with her, you know? I guess like any other like uh, dog that's not trained well, sometimes it, he likes to hump your leg. I'm pretty uh, sure he so was humping her leg for like two thirds <laughs> of that. Because there's no way that he was getting penetration in some of those positions, but he's still going at no. it. You know? No. Well, he had his clothes on too. That didn't help. <laughs> <The matter. laughs> and no. We got a pretty good sort of, you know, evil dead moment out of that, I think, where he got the fucking arrow bolt through the skull while he was trying to oh, accost yeah. her, though. And then he bled all over that girl's face like that definitely mm -hmm. made me think of that. Yeah. You know, um, oh, yeah. and then her whole death with the go ahead. Sorry. Well, that was a unique kill um, uh, for both of those. Um, I mean. I did not entirely expect that, uh, that a whole like rope to, uh, to come down like a hangman's noose and just kind of uh, just take her up back and Dude, over the car. Homeboy oh, was standing far did. back, too, so I, like, imagined that he fucking lassoed her like a cowboy, dude, because he was standing <laughs> way far back, unless he did it, like, just over it and then ran with it or something. <laughs> and I, I uh, swear to God, oh, God uh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. That's where no. really good. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I was expecting that her head was just going to be decapitated. But inst instead, he he just pulled her up over and then she just fell head smack. Oh, it, 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 like, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, 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 so you could see the fucking spine break. Yeah, yeah that shit makes me <laughs> fucking cringe harder than if your head had been split wide open, you know, because it's like, oh god, that's like realistically survivable. She could be just laying there all fucked up. Like, <laughs> oh, I've had, I've never had serious injuries, but I've had shit like that where you like jar your spine or you land wrong and you just like, oh, uh, you're making those mm -hmm. embarrassing grape lady sounds. And... <laughs> That was one of those fucking kills for sure. Um, but let's go back to the first kill. Um, uh, uh, the one where uh, 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 the one where um, 
she's looking for uh, for the guy she just banged because uh, 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 she uh, can't, uh, she went to look for some water, I guess. Um, and uh, uh, wash that semen off. Comes, yes, man. I don't know what it was. <laughs> said it was sticky. Well, though. I'd yeah. like to just take a shower, basically, in the factory, essentially, and was just putting her clothes on after she had taken her shower. You know, because, hey, somebody was, you know, they made a snuff film here, probably a killer about, well, let's have a second. <laughs> take a shower. You, you just, the industrial shower. You banged in a gross, <laughs> abandoned building where you're pretty sure a snuff film was just shot. You might as well just ditch the vest. It's the least of your worries. You know? <laughs> no, no one fucking oh, cares. Like, uh, <laughs> I mean, now this I, I look at this as an american horror movie trope because it's always the people who have sex it's usually in the middle of the freaking woods and stuff like that and uh they end up getting killed and they're usually the first ones to die so this this goes along with a lot of those original like american horror movie slasher tropes oh for sure and, uh, cabin in the woods mm-hmm. which uh which one day we need to cover Cabin in the Woods because it is just uh, a great film when it comes to insight and the horror. It and, really uh, is. Just, mm-hmm. Then they're like, we're going to have sex in the middle of the woods. It's <laughs> like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, you might as well just at put least, your head on a chopping block at that point. Okay, at you're least, done. At least in Until Dawn in the video game, you go to a cabin to do that stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> And you know, okay, on that note too, with those tropes, we've seen a lot of like Jason stabbing people mid mid mm-hmm. fucking sesh, you know, while they're banging. Like people definitely die in the middle of having consensual sex, but this might be my first mid rape fucking kill that I can mm-hmm. take note of. Where the, and then he just immediately kills the girl he kind of saved. So fuck it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But that first kill, how does that girl die again? See, is she the one um, that's strapped into the booby trap? That's later. I feel like the booby um, trap. That's like the blades come out of the floor and the yeah. wall and just. Oh, like, she's the impalement. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That, what did you guys think of that shit? That I thought that was pulled off fucking almost a little oh, too realistically. Cool. That uh, that they did was a really good job with it. That was a pretty co- uh, cool um set uh, set up. I mean. Uh, I could not figure out how, how the fucking things were coming up out of the floor, coming out out of the wall, you know, straight through her, and this, and then just kind of, uh, it was like not only was she impaled, but it almost was like she was drawn, uh, drawn and quartered too, you know. <laughs> it reminded me a lot of what you imagine yeah. would happen with one of those magician tricks where they're stabbing <laughs> the different swords, oh, like yeah. if it went wrong. Before they realize or something like that's what I imagine happens, um, um, and then of course they realize they actually actually did kill the victim. <laughs> right. um, so how did you how did you guys interpret that kill? Like you said, like that's a good point. You know, I wasn't sure how they were coming through there at first too, and I think I definitely I remembered like the baby scene, but not how it I fit know, into the movie. I know how it's done. No, I didn't know how it was done back then. I just figured it was some kind of weird, elaborate trap. That's but what I thought, I, too. But now I'm more on the line of it must be this the, the weird psychic uh, power thing that they kind of throw in at the end of this. Oh, uh, yeah, it totally film. is. Uh, but so, you, you'd be forgiven for thinking it's booby traps. Like, I mean, they got oh, yeah. the killer and like military garb, and there is another booby trap later in the movie. Mm. So... I oh, thought, yeah. like, damn, homeboy just made a fucking crazy spike trap, I guess. <laughs> like, it didn't make sense to me how she triggered it, but or how it would be accurate enough to hit her. But, whatever. You know, I, <laughs> took this, I took this totally wrong. At the beginning, I took this whole thing the first time totally wrong. Uh, because I was laughing. I will admit, I was probably, I might have had a little bit of my, you know, uh, libation during the time. But I was just laughing at the stupidity of it all and just like, you dumb people. <laughs> no, don't do that. And then I'm just like, and of course I just start laughing. I was like, yeah, well, that's what you, uh, that happens. And then just almost every kill, except for the, well, no, I didn't feel sorry for her either because she basically ran and left all of her friends to die after mm-hmm. nearly getting herself killed running into a collapsing room. So I really didn't uh, feel for her either. It was just uh, I didn't have a lot of feelings for many of these characters. 
Well, even <laughs> that that whole sequence, like in hindsight, knowing a, the the backstory to that actress, seems like it might have been tacked in there just to like we got to show this girl. We're kind of oh, yeah. financially obligated to fucking put her on screen right here. So. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, they were financially obligated put, to put her on on sc uh, screen, but after the fact, they just uh, they decided to uh, a front ru uh, run the main ch uh, uh, chick instead. <laughs> In the end, oh, she's hey. much better, man. I mean, yeah, uh, oh, she was a good choice. What did you guys think of the whole booby trap? I mean, obviously the impalement is great, you know, like I, I love how it's, oh, yeah. it's so slow and there's like the parts where it's like not just flying right through her. I mean, it's like pushing in and then pushing out. It was grisly, dude. Uh, and then she's well, like uh, conscious and reacting through most of it too. And I guess well, according to IMDB, there's some goofs of, as far as like blood on her clothes go during that. But and man... Nami and that one guy, they, they end up dropping through that floor uh, uh, that evidently they did not realize there was this big gaping hole. Uh, and the yeah. next moment that you actually see Nami, she's up on the fucking rooftop. Of so, some weird, seemingly underground city. I had no idea what was yeah, going on there. That was weird. I had no <laughs> clue. Yeah, that was just like they fell into a warp or something. Uh, and then happened. it turns out. At least in that cut, we got screwed out of Kondo's death. We didn't get to see that on screen. Yeah, you just see his severed head. Which, Actually, I mean... Go, go ahead. No, no, go ahead with yours. Uh, I'll hold my... Oh, I was just going to say it would have been nice to fucking see, you know, because he was a dick. He was a rapey <laughs> dick. You know? Yeah. Like, you want to see him get his head chopped off. I guess, you know, yeah, well, stand decapitations are kind of standard, but... Fuck it's it. actually kind of funny because he's sitting there, like, uh, saying, like, Hey baby, uh, I'll do better this time. I, I admit, I, I did. I couldn't do it this last time. Like he just, he apparently totally failed for her the last time they attempted something together, and she's just like, Ooh. nah. He yeah, must that like was how he was talking. Like you know, like uh, sure, baby, I'll do better this time. He must get it on yeah. uh, better in public places. Then I guess. Yeah, well, you know that, <laughs> the, <laughs> the the tetanus and the snuff film being filmed there must have been a good fucking motivator. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, because he indicated that he she indicated basically he couldn't get it up for the last time they were doing it. And that's amazing. He, that's the reason why he up. was being so like uh, so uh, insistent on it was because no no no. Let me make it up to you. I will do it right this time. And, yeah, I don't know if getting all rapey because you finally got a boner <laughs> is the best way to convince a chick that you're right for her, but Japan might be a different place. The mysticalness of the East. I don't know. Because uh, uh, I've noticed... The girl with the... Oh. No, go ahead. No, no. no. I was just well, I just noticed in both movies, movies there's yeah. like kind of a theme of overly dominant men, which could be the connection to the oh, pink yeah. film genre, or it could just be a Jap Japanese thing. Um, you're probably more knowledgeable on that than I am, but yeah. yeah. Oh. I mean, you don't see as much of this stuff in the bars I'm concerned from what I've seen, unless it's in this type of film, like a horror type film. Well, unless you're seeing a Russ Mayer film, most... Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Most uh, women in the porn industry are are these helpless females that that seem to uh, be dominated by the male, uh, um, you know, the uh, the males in the sto uh, stories, or, or or there are some films that are uh, pornographic in nature that uh, uh, have some equal balance. I mean, it, oh, it like all thriller, depends. cruel picture. That's a yeah. good example of one yeah. where chick fucks some dudes up after they use her like meat or whatever but uh, uh, it doesn't go uh, quite that far in this i mean i feel like you know okay yeah. the, in terms of like horror grave. and exploitation yeah that's that's some rapiness you know old condo he gets like 25 percent rapey this isn't anything that's gonna like ruin the yeah. movie for you guys you know uh <laughs> and he pays for it so you know good on that <laughs> what do you guys think about the booby trap scene well, actually, like I wanted to hit that beforehand, especially because it was set it up. The thing was with her camera, and I had a I had something to say about that because that was a uh, I thought it was really good at first because it really hit a lot of the creepy notes, 
where they're seeing the camera. They first go and approach this thing, and then uh, they stab one of them, like cut it, cut their face through the uh, uh, bar. Oh, such a and good they, little. They run away. Okay. <laughs> she drops the she drops the camera, and they keep going. The other two fall off the edge into the twilight zone, where we're <laughs> and uh, and then she manages to catch it at the last minute, and then you just suddenly see the flash going off on the camera. Indicating the killer is slowly approaching. Mm-hmm. Now that I really loved the way they handled that scene because that was really legit creepy mm-hmm. how they did that. Because you know he's coming for her mm-hmm. and he's making this a game of coming close towards her and she's legit terrified. Then it kind of ruins it when she runs, and you can tell that the room that she runs closes the door and shoves the box against the door at continues on a good ways out mm-hmm. but she decides i'm just gonna hang out by the door i'm good yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. put a few boxes in front of the door which of course he just easily pushes out of the way and and uh then sets up that booby trap scene that you're talking about mm-hmm. yeah i thought i thought that was great my girlfriend was like freaking out during that part too with the camera flashes and shit i mean is she the same chick oh, yeah. is is she the same chick that uh, Nami sees on the television later on. Um, Where with her face painted and, and shit, yeah. Yeah, okay. See, that's, that's something I wanted to ask them. Brandon, because I'm not as familiar with like Japanese imagery or things like that. Is there any significance to that face paint, or is it just him getting freaky with it, you know? I mean, he could have been trying to do some sort of geisha thing with her. I mean, it was that's like a I pale thought, face maybe. paint, but I mean, you, could, you can tell that the man had some odd sensibilities or... It's his brother, uh, <laughs> which we'll get into later. I, um, I, I did not know that they were going to go all basket case on this. Uh, dude, that's like some new level basket case <laughs> shit, though, right there. <laughs> uh, definitely, I have some thoughts on that, but um, yeah. I don't know. I liked the swerve of the fucking booby trap scene, how you thought maybe she saved her and they were going to team up, and then it was like, nope, machete to the face. And then I really liked how the girl's eyes were still moving, like after the (laughs) machete hit her. That's such a good touch. There there was carelessness. I could have seen it. He didn't even need to put the gag in her mouth. She could have said, No, it's hooked up to a crossbow. Don't open the door. I could see her still going, What? And (laughs) because she just goes and runs right into the trap, not even bothering to look around. When, when you know, he knows this guy has been setting traps back and forth at this. Yeah, time. it's well, it's it stands to reason if you just open a fucking door with a crossbow trap, maybe have a look around before you just go charging in there. That's how people get machetes to the face. I thought that it was going to slice her entire face off with oh, the that angle just, that it was at. I, I like that the way that they did that is just that was a really cool kill. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that's uh, that's an interesting point I wanted to bring up in the fact that I was hoping for, like, the face to get sliced off. And then it, it did turn out cooler the way it was. So maybe yeah. m- more gratuitous isn't always the best choice when it comes to gore. See, and getting here, fucking wedged in her skull, like, halfway through the frontal lobe of her brain yeah. or something and making her eyes move here around, is, that's here probably is, way better than face getting cut off, you know? Here is where I thought of Saw. Uh, because the, uh, uh, oh, jig, yeah. Jigsaw... A jigsaw, uh, every <laughs> trap that he set, every uh, every one that he tra- set the trap for had a, a, an option to uh, to get out of it. True, uh, and uh, he he al- allowed that. I mean, he obviously thought uh, thought ahead of time that if that gun was going to go off, it was not going to hit her. So yeah, he set it, up it hit a so far trap. to the side. Yeah, it hit so far to the side that I think it was just meant to fuck with them. And then mm-hmm. the real trap was oh, the yeah. shit. Oh, it was um, obviously a fake out trap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and mean, then after that, that, isn't that when all the Roman candles start going off and shit? Yeah, the, the psychic attacks essentially that Barry shoots at her. And, <laughs> uh, but that's kind of confusing because you really don't you you don't expect any psychic attacks. <laughs> if you watch it a second time through or a third time as I as I did, uh, you, you notice these things, and it's just, and maybe that's why I'm picking up some of this stuff because I've watched it three times basically within the span of a week. 
And uh, no, and I'm loving that because you're definitely thinking about it differently. Yeah. I only watched it the once and saved it so that I could be like fresh on it. But uh, no, Gandalf, for me, Gandalf, Gandalf the Gray came and shut off some of his fireworks. <laughs> for me, it seemed like it was like almost some military distraction type effect to make her run into that second trap with all the crossbow yeah. bolts that pinned her to the wall because they'd already set him up as like he's in this military gear. He's set at least one or two booby traps so far. And maybe, you know, this was part of a second one. So your first viewing, you'd be forgiven for just assuming like, oh, this is meant to terrorize her. So it's just like some things that he set up, you know. Uh, obviously, apparently, they're, it, they were psychic Roman candles or something. Um, yeah. And then is, this is kind of where we start going into that, right? Because at this point, it's just Nami left. You know, everyone yeah. else has been killed, including Ball Gag. He's out there with an arrow in his dumb. So there's it's just her and the killer at this point, yeah. Yeah, and they they end up having that uh, conversation between her and the alter ego, and uh, about him and his brother. And you get a little bit of insight into his character as he tries to kind of mislead her. And uh, you know, we're not like, very well. Either. Oh, I've got hit by this arrow. And oh then, Lord! Did you oh, see that? he's over there. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, good, po good, subtle yeah. thing though, where she realized after the whole fireworks booby trap scene that his lighter was hot. Mm -hmm. You know, like he mm -hmm. lit the he lit the fireworks or something. That's what I still maybe am leaning towards yeah. those fireworks because I didn't even catch that. My lady Jessica pointed that out to me. I was like, "Why is he she tripping on the lighter being warm? He's probably been using it." And she's like, "No, he lit the fireworks." Mm -hmm. well, he's been like using th that's the other weird thing is that he he's lighter as hot as it is and she can't even touch it because it's so hot because if you notice when he grips it he's gripping it the you know the regular way <laughs> she's the one that has to hold it by the the thing well he says something about his vicious. nerves being shot yeah he does at one point when they're walking through that tunnel he like collapses with his heart thing and then which is we learn later is some fucked shit but <laughs> like he collapses and then she hands him the lighter and she says something about it and he's like yeah ever since i was young my nerves have been shot like so i just don't feel it uh -huh. and maybe that's something i don't know if that's to do with this little he does he tries to give her an out which yeah. Almost makes no sense because they lured her. Well, it's the alter ego, though. At that point, it's the older brother, yeah, the I actual mean, vessel. He actually, yeah, yeah. yeah he actually does <laughs> really want her to leave. He's like, I've had enough killing, and she has her final girl moment where she's like, No, he can't get. Away. Certainly, the police would do no good. I'll be able to take him out. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, Which I did uh, like. Go after he goes in and take the body. No, uh, well, dude, I, I, I really enjoyed how she put across that. I think she did better maybe than anybody in any horror movie I've ever seen of getting across that yeah. feeling of guilt in that one scene where she's like crying because she brought all those people into it. Yeah, I, I did kind of feel for her then. Yeah, it was surprisingly you know? good, you know. Uh, but then her walking away sobbing during her final girl moment probably doesn't make you feel that girl power that I think you're supposed to at that that particular no. point in the movie. No, no. Would you be? Would you allow me to uh, set the stage for this final uh, to go over this? Yes, this is please. What my biggest issue is with this film. Have at so, it, sir. When she comes back through the tunnel, she finds, of course, this living area, and. I will admit, set piece for this area, when they show it off with the hanging bodies, yeah. it is very cool. Fucking that, glorious. That is amazing. And he's talking with, they've got this player of the mother's voice, and she finds out that she kind of resembles the mother uh, uh, that uh, that's in the picture. And you even see the younger brother with the older brother with all the pens through his face. And he and the younger brother end up talking. And of course, the younger brother is like, hey, he's here. And she's here. And, and they have this confrontation where you find out that this kind of demon fetus child is actually inhabiting 
the uh, body of the guy and uh, you have this kind of life or death struggle. Now, this is where, one, this is where it becomes Japanese in nature because the American film probably would not have done that. No, maybe we're not. We're not getting too. We're there. not getting that Scooby Doo moment where you pull off the mask and it's like, haha, it was you all along. And it's like, nope, tumor baby, fucking. That's <laughs> just not the way our movies <laughs> work. <laughs> I, if this was done anywhere else, and I think it would have done really well with this ending, as you do the exact same thing, except there's no demon baby. He's just hearing his own brother and he's doing like a like a gosh psycho moment where he's talking in little brother's voice and some sort of like a, a split a- uh, like anthony this, perkins this moment. personality thing right and then you you see him saying get out and then he ends up doning the mask again and then trying to hunt her down and you have that confrontation like that if that was how it ended I would have given this movie like full on. This would be like an eight out of ten for me. I would have loved on this right. movie. It's a bit much. It's thrown in there just for the shock. It's it's like a uh, weird Japanese. There, I think they almost forgot, you know. And then they're like, it's weird Japanese shit, you know. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's all I can make of that baby ending because it really doesn't serve any real purpose to the movie other than giving you a final shock, you know. Mm-hmm. And it is a tie to the second film the second one i would argue did it in a much weirder way and we'll get to that but uh and then they they double down on it in this one it it, it would have even been more fine if it was just the one baby but then they fucking double down on it and somehow it infects the girl because he grabbed her neck for a minute that doesn't make any fucking sense if you're gonna infect her at least have the baby fucking like put that because remember i choked her with the umbilical cord it should have mm-hmm. went down yeah. her throat, and he should have like pumped some demon semen into her or something, so that oh, the yeah. fucking baby would have came back <laughs> that way. Like I would have bought that, but he just like squeezes <laughs> her neck for a minute, and then later she's like, "Oh, it itches." Baby fucking comes out of her. <laughs> and th- that would have been to me. I really liked this film up until that point, and there yeah. were some scenes with it. Like I said, the backdrop of the lair was really awesome. I feel like they and, started to run out of you know, money by the end of the film. Well, I don't know. That oh, might have cost him cool more than the porn star, the end, dude. Yeah. yeah. They might have spent more money saying. on that than the fucking skin in the flick, you know? Uh, they spent the whole budget on that end. <laughs> well, dude, that set, too, like, we're not doing it justice here. You got all these crazy oh, tattoo yeah, yeah. wires hanging down, and there's, like, the paintings of the weird, like, armature things or whatever they are in the background with all those beds that he never uses, and it's just... Well, There's I'm something sure much that was creepy. already still uh, already there, and then they just used what was there because th- this place actually looked like an ab- abandoned compl- uh, uh, complex of, so- of sorts. So I mean, those wires hanging is weird, though. I don't know if in Japan they have tweakers like we do here, so they wouldn't be all pulled out like that for them taking the copper or whatever, you know. <laughs> see that that's the, the other thing is even like using the end scene where he comes back as kind of the burnt corpse to attack her and she actually is like <laughs> pulling like the fingers that kind of fell off around her neck where it had strangled even that would have been cool to bring in a sort of like a jason final scare moment mm-hmm. it, it, just leave the demon psychic baby thing uh, to the side yeah they went and, too uh, japanese with it at the end is <laughs> I think the best summation for it they were like we gotta be weird and quirky in japanese let's have a baby come out of his tit <laughs> like why <laughs> if they could have set him on fire and then had him come back and be like Rah! and that would have been a sufficient ending to the no, movie this baby is a womb is coming out of that woman's nipple let's <laughs> let's let's pull it out of there boys i mean and fucking i don't know man i think that the it's saying mama at the end though is definitely something that would have shown up in one of our shitty b movies over here so they kind of brought it back around with that a little bit even though it was fucking terrible so uh i don't know i mean i think we've covered soundtrack i definitely did not tell you guys about how these sweet special effects were done by this dude who like uh his name's shinichi wakasa and he went on to make a bunch of monster suits for Godzilla movies. Well, we oh. did have the It's Alive tr- uh, trilogy, 
uh, to, to in answer in response to that. <laughs> uh, we only talk about the first one, David. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one that's allowed me. <laughs> um, so I, I think that's pretty cool, that too. That the, the, the special effects on this are good. So just knowing the guy went on to have a career is, is pretty neat. Um, I think I think what you have on your hands here is a movie that fucking is like 80%, 90% good. And then that last little bit of it, they just tacked on for the sake of doing it. And to be fair... That's what ruins a lot of our horror movies, too. Even if it isn't weird fucking tumor babies coming out of people. <laughs> uh, somehow with the ability to actually verbalize words. That's just... <laughs> yeah, that was... Like I say, it was a good movie overall. I mean, uh, I cover it again when I, I did a uh, full-on review of it. Uh, it was a short review, but I did one. And, uh, and like I say, I, I think that it would have gone up at least one point, if not two points, without that ending. And if they had pulled it off right, I, it definitely would have been an eight out of ten for me. Yeah, I mean it's 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 great stuff all outside of that. You know, I think it's a solid like slasher flick on anyone's standards, especially considering like eighty slasher movies. You know, all the kills, you know, have good good impact. I think the plot is pretty unique, even though we've done that shit before, where it's like somebody kill. Oh well, goddamn it! Somebody killing on behalf of like a dead person. I thought it was going to be a ghost the whole time until the tumor baby showed uh, up. Uh, <laughs> I think that, that uh, thing, yeah. you know that. Go ahead. No, I was agreeing with you. That's what I thought. I was thinking that way too. Ow, cat! Oh. Bite my foot. <laughs> I guess I guess everything is telling us uh, move on. <laughs> oh, I think the twist at the end, you know, is is it, it packs a punch at least the first time, you know, before it's been soiled by the extra tacked on shit. It could have just been him talking for his brother and like being crazy, you know. Uh, I think the the thing that did definitely make the most impression on me this time around is the fact that while the movie is pretty damn Japanese, it's also pretty American and with you know doses of italian horror movies in there too like we we've already touched on yeah. um yeah and you know thankfully that's a tradition they carried over into the second movie which we're about oh, yeah. to talk about here real soon i think if i was to recommend this to someone i'd, I'd pretty much recommend it to anybody that's like a fan of just 80s slasher movies in general uh, especially if you're a fan of like italian slasher flicks and japanese cinema you're gonna enjoy it being like a melding of all three of those things and uh, I don't know. It's it's good fun on the mm. on the, the tumor baby. Oh, yeah. And they probably could explain <laughs> ball gag a little bit better, but you know, can't <laughs> win them all. Uh, what what yeah. would your guys' closing closing thoughts? <laughs> what would your guys' closing thoughts be on this bitch? Uh, I I actually believe uh, that this is the uh, type of film that had a lot that it learned and the positive from different types of horror and for the most part had it hit right on cue it had its failings but as far as films go i had never heard of it before mm -hmm. but i am certainly glad that i got to check this out and i have to thank you for for bringing up that <laughs> second one i'd never have seen the first one so that is a <laughs> that is a definite positive well, yeah, man. I mean, it's uh, sorry to cut you off there, Dave. One sec. Yeah. Uh, basically, I don't know how I haven't fucking revisited this a lot more over the years, you know, because I did like it at the time. I just never ended up with a copy of it and didn't order one until after I watched it this time, you know. So my pro my problem is I've never had the right moment to just sit down and wa uh, watch them because uh, uh, I'll, I'll collect many 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 different films just because uh, cause i hear about it or, or what whatnot and then it'll get stored like in the back of a closet yeah. uh, and then like years later i'll be like oh yeah wait a minute i have this uh, okay i'll stick this in <laughs> but i'm well, glad that I was these. Yeah, it's like we encourage each other to pull those out of the fucking collection you know yeah break open the plastic I mean, the first like uh, <laughs> i mean if you look at that like from the first uh, from the upper row up there, all the way down to the middle, all the way down to the end. God Those damn, Brandon. <laughs> <I've never laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. 
You do not get and, the uh, fucking full scope of that in your guys' videos. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, that's not, that's not all of it. I still have one. Oh, I know. I play, so, I mean, there's a lot. There's almost as many in the back of me <laughs> as there shit. is in front of me. So, you know, that's a, uh, I mean, you got more of them down there. And uh, Oh, yeah. You and Dave have the biggest movie collections of anybody I know. So I'm, I'm happy to get you guys to add to it and definitely happy to get you guys to pull from it oh, when yeah. we can. Um, I, I just, I'm, I, that's the thing I think I took away from this the most. And my girlfriend, I think even said something about it. Like, how is this not one that you ordered? Cause I should have, you know? So oh. if there's any advice I would impart on people in terms of like collecting shit like this is don't, don't form like some arbitrary grudge against it that you want to grab it physically. That's stupid. Just order it on the internet. If you need it to complete it. I've had the second one for like 10 years and I just never got around to buying this one, or I probably would have been pulling it out on the regular to show the people. And you should definitely do the same. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is it's a different time now nowadays. Physical media is harder to find. I think uh, I'll definitely one thing is it, it, you, you can't find it in the wild as much anymore because it's well, the motherfuckers are going away. And well, uh, you know, it, it's and yeah, I mean, see, for me. There are, uh, there are collectors like, that just yeah. go and buy the th uh, things up and then just sit on it for like many years until they uh, they uh, uh, fucking croak and need the money to pay for their surgeries. So uh, 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 that's how I end up buying a few of mine. There, there were some people who ended up just getting sick and needed to get rid of their collections. So <laughs> oh, yeah. all in yeah. obituaries too, man. <laughs> I used to love to go to like we had a we have this music store that used to be huge in Richmond called Plan Nine Music, and uh, you'd have indie bands, Richmond local bands, punk bands, and others that would play live, and you'd have all these records and albums in the basement. You'd have all the new CDs and stuff on the upper floor, and then you'd have all these weird indie films and anime. All oh, that throughout. sounds beautiful. And stores like that. They, they still exist, but they're nowhere near as prevalent. And this is the kind of film that I would have found at one of these. Stores. Right. It's because those people, it's not just stuff they're stocking the shelves with. It's stuff that like some weird clerk recommended it. So they put it in stock oh. or something, you know, and that, that's the, that's the goodness right there. Um, and there's, <laughs> there's the satisfaction to finding it physical for sure. But I've cheated myself out of rad shit. This is a good example. Beyond yeah. Reanimator is a good example of stuff that I've waited up on for like way too long. And at this point, it's just stupid. I haven't ordered it. So if you get a chance, you know, check it out on YouTube. I'm sure I'll hop on this on YouTube and throw the link for the full movie down there so you guys can watch it because it's just right on there. You might as well get to it before it's gone. Yeah, so. yeah the, the, the nudity friends. and everything is still intact. So you better get it before it's gone because once they find out about it, I don't know how they haven't figured it out yet. That, that, that's <laughs> it's strange with some of that because you can watch some women in prison flicks on YouTube, but if you show a nipple in your it might get taken down. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand what what determines what tits are the right tits, but at least they're on there, you know. <laughs> uh, so what about you, Dave? Is this one that you'll be pulling off in the future or recommending to people? At all. I'll be definitely recommending the f uh, first one. I'm still on the fence about the second one be uh, because even though there are some interesting qualities to the second one, uh, one and we'll get into that later, um, I, I will definitely pull in, uh, be pulling the Evil de uh, Dead trap um, down and rewatching it uh, uh, again in the future uh, uh, um, separately because I actually, I actually lo uh, I love the music behind it. So I'll I'll just listen to it in the background uh, <laughs> or something yeah, like that. The soundtracks you know? were rad. Actually. <laughs> Both of them had really good soundtracks, I think. But this one has that '80s vibe, like dialed into a T. I think it almost felt like Goblin, almost just a little bit to me, just a little bit. And the, the times when they took the the choice of implementing it too was very Italian, like I think it built at those oh, moments yeah. where it would have built in an Italian movie. Yeah. It was a very effective soundtrack. It, it was definitely, like I say, this film, this film was almost a uh, almost a perfect slasher. It just, just uh, that last bit. That last fucking bit. ending, man. <laughs> uh, but I mean, yeah. it's like that's the thing. Like I was saying earlier, at least we can say though that that's not too, altogether different from a lot of slashers, really. Like, 
a lot of times they kill it in the last reel. They're just like, oh, we've got to do something shocking or set up a sequel that's (laughs) never going to happen. Let's fucking ruin this right now. And this is definitely a movie where as much as I love fetus fucking tumor babies bursting out of people, (laughs) it's probably a little out of place, you know. (laughs) Uh, It was a little too much. Bit on the nose. We, We didn't need Hideki to be a real physical being. Um, <laughs> not entirely. We wanted him to stay attached. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess I mean, like, that's this good place to end it and start prepping up for our second oh, discussion yeah. here. I do want to dedicate this stream to the Streamyard Duck because he's adorable, and I think we've not given him enough credit in the past. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun to talk about this. I want to thank you, whoever it was. I forget which one of you. That recommended we do the first one also because I might have just watched I, that second oh, one again with you guys. I believe I suggested it because I, I didn't want to do the second one before the first, and I, I don't know you why. Know. It, it's like I, I I cannot do something out of order. I, right. I, I cannot just watch this. I have to watch this, this, well, this, and this before it. With you know? these, the the connection is negligible, but I'm glad we did it for comparison purposes, and okay. it got us all hyped on this one, which was. Definitely not something I expected. I mean, I knew I'd probably get it eventually because I did like it at the time, but after watching it again, man, do I need this on the shelf. So (laughs) definitely one worth looking into, people. And hopefully you're looking forward to our second discussion, which is on movies galore, yeah? Yeah. 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 Um, Over there and check that bitch out if it's probably up by the time you're done with this. All righty. I guess uh, we'll say who we are and then uh, unless we want to do like favorites uh, before we um oh we didn't get to favorite oh, scenes why don't here. we uh why don't we do it like this we'll just each do a favorite scene and then go into who we are and then we'll just go down the line and uh, end with dave so that he can uh, wrap us up <laughs> all right my favorite scenes like if i had to pick I would probably fucking do like the initial the snuff film scene. I really like how it flashes to that black and white. Obviously, you guys know I have a fucking soft spot in my heart for that type of <laughs> shit, and I just I can't get enough of that. Um, and just just the whole way it was played out to build like that holy shit feeling to the seeing the snuff tape, I think was was done really well. And then oh, yeah. just the set. You know, that last final set, where whatever you want to call it, the infirmary, his living space. My lady was calling it the infirmary because of all the beds, and it makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. Just that set. So those are my two takeaways from it is those. And then all the kills on their own were great. But, yeah, those the, the initial snuff tape and then just anything to do with that final set of the movie where he was taking the bodies. What about you, Brandon? Oh. What? Did you introduce yourself, though? Wow. Oh, I'm Mosley, and I did a review for The Mutilator recently on Drunken Master Studios, and I also handed out some good love advice for Marty, friend of the Rebel Gaming <laughs> Club, so check that out here soon. Uh, and I'm going to hand it off to Brandon now, because uh, he's... Well, uh, well I am uh, Septim Sen, a Septim Sen versus the world. Uh, we do a lot of movie stuff here. As, we, as you can see, uh, we have... Uh, both Jake and I have modest collections. His is about even That's with mine. Modest. So, uh, so yeah, we are. Uh, like I say, he he's about even with mine. Sometimes sometimes he is as bigger. Sometimes mine is bigger collection wise. Uh, <laughs> but uh, not much else new going on with the channel. Just the typical stuff. I'll be more in depth the, at the Inside Movies Galore one. But uh, we do have. A lot of new reviews coming up. Uh, I had a whole bunch of stuff. I ended up uh, buying this uh, lot off of what movie one because he's been having some uh, difficult times. And if you haven't gone to his site, try and help him out because he's been going through some hell right now. Uh, so he uh, he sold me one that's an indie film that I that I did a a review of. I uh, did reviews for both of these. Uh, I had one that just went up of Death Toil at one and two. And uh, I have one coming out of the anime series My Ad Guns, which is uh, a wild mix of uh, the whimsy of your under arrest and uh, the craziness of Excel Saga. So, <laughs> for anybody who's familiar with those two, they might find Sounds it. like a, a, a good time. It is an interesting time indeed. Uh, but with that being said, uh, you want 
want to stay tuned to the Inside Movies Galore because I also run the schedule and I have the final vote tally for Music Lovers March. And Ooh. you'll only... And these people don't even know. Yeah. But, and I, I, I will be, be reviewing those on our next meeting. Yeah, I'm so stoked <laughs> so, to find out what the final <laughs> is because that's going to be fun. Honestly. And what's, what's your favorite uh, scene in, in this movie? Oh, yeah. I, I've seen it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my favorite scene in uh, this particular film was um, the one with the first kill. I just I thought that was cool. But also close second. Again, they're kind of like half loves and not likes because the kind of the sex scene beforehand kind of ruins it for me in that kill. But the kill itself was really awesome. And I really like the scene at the start with the camera uh, as it's coming up because just how creepy that is. But again, that one kind of gets half ruined by her kind of just hanging around by the door <laughs> while he's uh, going there thinking a couple of boxes got to stop him. Uh, but uh, yeah, and again, they were still pretty powerful scenes. They, they had some awesome kills. It's a really a good time. Uh, they were both good overall. Well, um, my name is David Stregge. I run, uh, I, I founded uh, Inside Movies Galore, but I run it with all of you. And uh, I also do separate film reviews on uh, a, a film channel called Delusions of Grandeur. And uh, uh, I've been doing a lot of video collection videos lately, but I did get my, um, uh, my review of Death Toilet 2 out. Uh, not to top yours, Brandon, uh, no sir, but at least to get caught up the, uh, uh, somewhat. That way, uh, you you, Damn, still, Brandon. <laughs> you still <laughs> you still got a head start on, uh, on me on the uh, Anhedemia f uh, films. Uh, so, um, but uh, <laughs> uh, in any case, um, uh, definitely check out some of the uh, those. But my favorite uh, uh, scene, I guess, uh, I, I guess this is one uh, one of the first scenes that actually made me cringe. Um, it, it, it's the part where it, it, it um, it during the snuff uh, vi video where it, it actually made you feel like you were actually seeing the fear of of uh, of the main character uh, character lady uh, uh, um, when she saw the uh, the eye beam slashed mm -hmm. and the, that, that that triple uh, that triple um, a moment where you where you saw uh, it going go between that eye her eye the inside of her eye and uh, vice versa <laughs> that uh, th those camera angles whatever they did it did that that was uh, that just made me like turn my head just for a moment and uh i guess i, I would have to say that first kill there um uh, uh, where where she just got him uh, bailed i mean it was kind of funny that, uh, that they, uh, they were both banging each other uh, 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 and then all of a sudden she gets you know, uh, afraid by the snake, and then she backs up, and that's when uh, when she gets totally cornered, and uh, uh, all of a sudden the, the stuff comes out of the floor. You know, so um, I forgot about that way. snake. <laughs> ha ha ha! In any case, uh, thank you for listening to our um, discussion on this film. Hopefully, you enjoyed our ramblings on uh, on this particular f a film and i'm glad that i w got a chance to uh, and an excuse to watch this uh, uh, film uh these discussions often push me to uh, uh, to watch the films that are just sitting on my shelf uh, rotting uh just oh, yeah. like the flesh and uh, on the victims in this film uh, so um <laughs> definitely check out our other discussion on the second uh, 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 on the second um the discussion and uh enjoy your evening folks press like for kids <laughs>